from that. Okay, great. So uh, today's session is going to be on time series with analysis that it was found on the internet. And uh, I think it's really good resource to uh, when when we are going to work on time series data for the modeling part, as well as uh, for different exploratory data analysis. Uh, when someone is working on time series data analysis, most of the time is spent on uh, finding pattern trends, uh, figuring out the type of data that, that the data uh, contains, whether it's trendy, whether it's stationary, non-stationary, uh, handling that type of data and so on. So the modeling part when dealing with time series data analysis isn't that hard, but uh, it requires you to understand the type of data that you have before you start modeling. Because uh, for example, in this week's challenge, the sales are different from time to time and in whole days, the, the number of sales might differ from other uh, or from normal days and so on. So when modeling, we need to take that into consideration. Uh, in addition to other features that we have. Uh, so first of all, just to give uh, a brief introduction, uh, I'm sure that you have gone through this uh, on yesterday session, but uh, just to give an introduction, time stress data, also referred as timestamp data, is a sequence of data points indexing time order. And timestamp is collect data collected at different points in time. And these points typically consist of successive uh, measurements made from the same source over a time interval and are used to track uh, change over time. So it assumes that past pattern and behaviors will continue in the future. So when we say forecasting sales, uh, we, are, we are saying that we are uh, using past data or previous sales, previous years sales to forecast the sales of the future. It might be for a pharmacy, it might be for a store uh, or so on. It, it might be related to temperature. Most of the data are collected using uh, IoT devices and so on, different uh, device which measures data or which collects data from the environment. And they typically are time series data because they collect data on each time interval and uh, we can forecast the future trend or the, uh, the future pattern based on the data that we have or the past data. So. Uh, for the basic exploratory data analysis, we are going to use the following packages. Uh, for the modeling part, we'll be using uh, Facebook for Profit, which is a package uh, developed by Facebook, which is mostly used for time series data analysis. And uh, in this collab notebook, we will only be looking at how we handle outliers and some basic exploratory data analysis. So the first thing, So the first thing that we are going to do is import the necessary package, which will be used for uh, EDA as well as handling outliers. Uh, we'll be using Matthewsly, Pandas, uh, and other packages. And uh, the data. <coughs> okay. So the data, the data set is in my drive. So after mounting my drive, I can uh, directly read the data from uh, my drive content and. The data just contains, the data is uh, downloaded from UCI repository and it's, it is somehow related to meteorological data and uh, it stores different meteorological data by different regions and our target variable from our data is uh, the m 2.5, which just stands for uh, the particulate matter. A particulate matter is a particulate pollution and it's a mixture of solid dark particles and liquid droplets found in the air. We can find the full description of each data set, of each feature of the data set. The year stands for the year, the month stands for the month, and so on. We are interested in forecasting the, uh, the values of the PM2.5, which is the PM2.5 concentration. And uh, this concentration in the air will vary and based on its variance, it can cause an air pollution or no. So, uh, we are interested in finding or uh, in finding the patterns and how other features or other variables are related to this target uh, variable. 
So we can do a basic uh, analysis using uh, df.info and have a look at how much of our data is missing and the type of the data types of each features and so on. And uh, after uh, here we can see, so on time series analysis in other data types, when there is no time series analysis or when it's not based on time or it's not current, uh, it's not based on the time series, we can just go ahead and uh, work on the data, but when it's a time series analysis, we want to index our data or we want to index our data based on the timestamp that we have. So uh, if you see in our data frame, we have the year column and the men's column and the day column and in the hour column. And so what we are doing, what we are doing here is when reading the data from uh, the Google Drive, we are parsing the dates and we are joining the year, the month, the day, and the hour using the date parser from the pandas, and we'll convert the each uh, rows or each fields of the data into the format of year, month, day, and hour. So our data will be indexed. We'll index our data in the next section. We'll index our data based on the timestamp. So if we now uh, have a look at our head, uh, we can see that. Uh, we have indexed our data uh, by using the year, month, day, and hour column. So for each uh, row, it's indexed based on its timestamp. So why we need to do that or why we need to index our data sets based on timestamp is that when working on a time series data analysis, most of the time we need to uh, select part of the data that 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 is between a specific given interval of timestamp and having an index of dates makes it much more simpler. So we'll be indexing our data uh, by using the timestamp so that we can easily filter out, select, and do any kind of operation which is related to timestamp. So when we want to select a specific time range when which uh, contains the holiday or uh, a specific month of the year or a specific day of the uh, month, we can easily filter out using the index. And when we now also when we now print the info, we can also see that the number of null values and the data type of each uh, columns. Uh, here we can see that the mens is in the object format, so we'll be casting that into the appropriate data type because we'll be using the mens, the dates, and uh, mostly the timestamps uh, uh, features that are related to, to the timestamps. We'll be using them, so we need to cast them to their appropriate data type. So we have here casted uh, men's to numeric, and we can uh, again have a basic data exploratory for each of the features that we have, the number of rows, the number of missing values, the unique values we have, uh, and so on. So these are the features that you have, or these are the columns that you have, and uh, the number of missing values, the if the column contains a missing value or not. So some of the column dots don't contain a missing value while the others contain a missing value. So we'll also look how we can handle missing values for time series data analysis. And uh, the number of unique values we have for each column is also listed. And we can also do uh, a very simple univariate data analysis uh, by using the data frame dot describe method and it will give us a basic summary or is a basic summary of the data. So it will be calculating the mean standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, the 75th, and so on. So we are interested, or our target variable is PM2.5, and the mean is about 65.98, the standard deviation is about 72, and we can see that the minimum value of PM2.5 is three, while the 50th percent or the 50th percentile is about 49. 41 and the maximum is about 881. So this looks like an outlier, but uh, we need to handle that differently because uh, in a time series data analysis, some of the values in the trend might go up based on the uh, day of the month or season of the year and so on. So we'll have to analyze the pattern in, or the trend of the data that we have and see if we have a similar trend in other uh, in other seasons of the year or if it is cyclic or not. So after an analyzing the trend or the pattern of the data that we have, we can 
uh, maybe handle out that outlier in a different way, or even use that for our uh, feature entering in feature entering. We can also see other uh, values of our data and see how they are distributed. This will give us basic description. And then, uh, yes, so we'll, we'll also use the uh, NAN index. We'll copy that. We'll see this later why we are uh, using the NAN index. But for now, we are using the index uh, that has it. So but when we list out all of the, in the index of our data set, we can see that it's indexed by the uh, timestamp. So it will list out all of the timestamps for uh, our data set and going on to the same process. So as I've said earlier, by indexing our data set by using the timestamp, we can filter out or select a specific uh, range of uh, our data by using the timestamp. So here we are selecting the data between 2013-03 and 01 to 2013-03 and uh, 05. We are only selecting a specific dates uh, from, uh, from, from March, from the month of March and having a look at our, how our data is and if they are missing values or not. So when we are going to analyze the patterns, the trends and uh, have a look, have an, overall, have, an, have an overall look of our data for a specific month or year, we are going to select only that specific month, day or year based on our need or requirement and have a look at the patterns that exist between each month or each year or uh, each uh, holiday seasons. And we can also, because it's a timestamp, you can also filter out by using the year. So here we are selecting the year between 2013 to 2015. And we can have a look at uh, the data that it, it will only uh, select the data between 2013 and 2015. And we can have a look at that. And uh, our target variable is pn 5 So we are just going to select our target variable and have a look at our target variable. and. Uh, Yes, so to just have a look or uh, to, to have a look of uh, which years that are included in our data set, we can use the PM data or our data set dot index dot year dot in the or uh, dot unique values. So it will list out the unique values that are in the year column or uh, in the data sets index. So we can see that our data set starts from 2013 and uh, it's in, into in 2017. So the range is from 2013 to 2017. Now we can have a plot of the PM data. The PM data is only selected, is uh, uh, the PM data only consists of the target variable that we are interested in or we are interested in forecasting for the future. So when you plot by using the pandas plot function, we can plot the data and we can have a look uh, how how our data is distributed. Uh, as you can see here, it's really hard to see at the individual data because uh, the data here is uh, plotted by use, uh, using hardly uh, came to the five uh, distribution. So if you want to aggregate the value, if you, if you want to have a look at the data in much more better way, we can aggregate the value by using the mens or uh, by any specific season or uh, some other ways. Here, the data is stored based, the data is plotted based on the date, based on hourly, not date, actually, sorry. It's plotted uh, hourly. So each individual point uh, is for each hour of the day, then each day of the month, and so on. So we can see that there are lots of points and it's a bit hard to, uh, to visualize or analyze the trend that exists in the data set. But uh, yes, so we need to work more on the data. So the first thing that we did was to split the data or to select out or to, fil to filter out only uh, rows that have the year of 2015. And after selecting the year 2015, we can again select our target variable and we can finally plot that. And this is much more better than the previous plot. So this will only include the data or the plot for the year 2015. And you can see that uh, how the data is distributed throughout the year and how the data is distributed or how the data increases or decreases throughout the months of the year. And uh, one can 
uh, definitely say that the PM2.5 target variable increases on January and February, and it starts, it slightly starts to decrease uh, on the next lenses, and it gets to the lowest point about on May or June, and it will again start to increase up or reach its peak on December and November. We can also select the data from 2016, and again, selecting our target variable, and have a look uh, at our data, how our data looks like at uh, on 2016, on the year 2016. So there is somehow a uh, similarity between the data of 2015 and 2016. The data is uh, the PM2.5 uh, variable has uh, higher values in the beginning of the year and starts to decrease in the value and somehow starts to increase. It's not perfectly aligned, but doesn't have a perfect linear uh, relationship, but it is somehow related. Uh, so what we can do is by using Plotly, Plotly is another tool to uh, plot data that we have. It's a really uh, great tool and becomes handy when, especially when uh, trying to analyze data, uh, a time series data. So by using Plotly, we can, we will use the def na index because we are trying to plot a, uh, a linear relationship by using the x and the y axis. So for the x axis, we'll give the year, month, day, hour column, which uh, basically con uh, contains the year, the month, the day, and the hour, or the timestamps uh, that we uh, previously assigned. And the y, the y variable is our target, which is the PM2.5. And uh, we can plot that by using the Plotly package. And here we can see how our data is distributed from 2013 to 2017. And Plotly gives us a slider so that we can slide to a specific, to a specific year, uh, to a specific month of the year and have a look at how our data looks like at that specific year. Uh, yes, so uh, here we can see that there is a missing point right here after April. Uh, yes, in the month of April, there is a missing data. So there is a discontinuity in the uh, in the chart. Uh, that's why we need to handle outliers. We'll look more into that in the, in the next section. But uh, by using the Plotly slider uh, method available in the Plotly package, we can have a look at how our data is distributed for each month uh, of the year, and we can only sell, we can select a specific year, uh, a specific year between the different years that we have. So this will only take data for year 2013, and we can also go on to year 2014 and so on. So by using the slider, we can have a look at how our data is distributed. Uh, let me just try to select data for January. Yeah, so if you look at the distribution, uh, we can see that the, the PM2.5 uh, value gets higher on January and February. And uh, when it goes to, when it goes to March, uh, it starts to decline and so on. So we can have a look at each of the months of the year and see how our data is uh, how our data is distributed throughout the lenses of the year. And we can also, uh, by adding additional parameters, we can select how many years to include in our data. So if I say to, if I press the button one year, it will only include the data for one year. And if I uh, press the two years button, it will include data for two years and so on. And if I press all, it will include all of the data. Uh, starting from 2013 to 2017 and have a look at each of the years by sliding the sliding window and have a better understanding of the data that we are going to work on. Uh, and the next thing that we are going to do is, as we have seen above, the data is uh, aggregated hourly. The, the data is plotted uh, hourly. So we need to aggregate the data uh, on other basis, maybe on a day basis or in, on a month basis, because the data points will get much higher and it will be difficult to see how our data is distributed when the data is plotted uh, using hourly basis. So 
what we are going to do here is we are going to plot the, uh, the data for 2014, for the year 2014, the data for year 2015, and uh, aggregating that data by using, uh, by aggregating that data uh, using daily basis. So our new data will be aggregated based on the daily basis, and we can have a better look at how our data is distributed for the year 2014 and for the year 2015. And when you plot our data, you can see that the blue one is for the year 2014 and the orange one is for the year 2015. And uh, it can be seen that the data is somehow similar to the previous year or the year 2014 is similar to the year 2015 because uh, the peaks are mostly on January and February and also on December, and the data uh, will go down slightly on March, and it will again start to pick up and down and so on. But most of the uh, the peak values of the year are on January, February, and December. So we can see that it is somehow similar to the previous year. Uh, we can also select uh, the data from 2014 to 2016, and we'll group each of the uh, each of the data by the months and we can have a basic description. So for it will give us the basic statistics for men from starting from the first month January to the uh, 12 months of the year, which is December. And we can see that <coughs> uh, the minimum, the maximum, the mean of each of the months. So for January, which is the first month, we can see that the mean is 70, the minimum is three, and the maximum is about 443. And for the second month, which is February, we can see that the maximum is about 881 and so on. And also on December, uh, the maximum is about 647. So from our data, after aggregating it by months and uh, doing uh, a basic summary or description, we can see that the months uh, January, February, March are uh, much higher than the others, especially February. And then on December, it also starts to uh, grow higher than the other menses. And on the rest of the months of the year, it will start to decline and it will again start to increase uh, on the 11th months. Uh, the next thing that we can do is, after grouping it by months, we'll be selecting the months, the PM2.5, which is our target variable, the temperature, and we'll group that by months and we'll do an aggregation. We'll select the maximum value of PM2.5 for each of the months and we'll be selecting the minimum and the maximum of the temperature. So for each of the months, what we have here is we have the maximum of PM2.5 and for the temperature, we'll have the minimum and the maximum. And we can see that uh, for the first month, January, we have about 443 for the PM2 value and the minimum is minus 16 and the maximum is 12 uh, and the list goes on. So we can see how they are related with each other we can see how temperature is related to the, our target variable. We can also include other features and uh, try to understand how each of the features are correlated with our target variable. We can also do that for uh, for year 2015 and have a look. So we can. Uh, I, I think plotting is much better. So when you plot our data, we can see that uh, the PM2 or the target variable is correlated with temperature. And in the first months on January and February, we have lower temperature and and when the temperature starts to increase on the mid of the year, the PM2.5 variables, uh, the PM2.5 value starts to decrease. And finally, when it's, when it reaches summer, uh, no, when uh, when the end of the year uh, arrives when, on November and December, we can see that the PM2.5 value starts to increase and it will reach its peak. So we can see that they are highly correlated and uh, we can work or we can use my better feature engineering when we, when we are going to fit uh, our model. Okay, so if we, uh, so, so far we had a look at uh, how we can analyze our data or try to look at patterns that exist in our data, how the features are correlated. So we have seen that there are lots of missing values in our data. So we need to handle uh, missing values in our data. So uh, before I go on to the section, uh, 
how do you think that we will handle missing values? I think I'm the one that gave the session uh, previously on the previous weeks on how we should handle missing values. So most of the time we used mean and median for numeric columns and we used mode to handle uh, uh, objects or non-numeric uh, values. So do you think that we can apply the same concept for time search analysis? Uh, uh, no, I don't think we can use this. Uh, maybe it's better to use uh, like backfill or forward fill mm. uh, by by using like previous uh, or the next uh, entry as to fill the missing data. Because I mean, it doesn't make sense to use the mean because it could be like very far from the from that the, it ruins the trend. Maybe I don't know. Mm. This mm. is how I think. Yes, that that's right. Okay, interpolation, right? Just yes. Yes, I, I, but I think that uh, it might be useful to use uh, the mean or the median, but mostly the median because. Uh, uh, I think it won't really affect the, the data if the missing values are, 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 are real missing values, I think. Because okay. I read a material yesterday and they said that we can use the median to fill them. Okay. Mm. Okay, so uh, maybe just ask, let me ask you a question. Uh, we can see that our temperature is distributed in this way. And uh, yes, for the year, maybe let me go to 2015. Mm. Yes, maybe let's just use this. And we can see that this is the data set description hold on uh, yes this is the total data description so we can see that for the temperature column n, or maybe let's say we have a missing value uh, for the target variable which is paying 2.5 okay then we can see that the mean is about 65.98 and the minimum is 3 and the the maximum is 881. And we have seen that the value goes to the peak when it reaches to the end of the year, right? Yes. And let's say we have a missing value on December. If we decide to fill that with the mean or the median, it's going to be filled by 65 or uh, the median, which is also far from 881. So do you think that we will have an accurate data if you have a lot of missing values uh, on the end of the year? No, I don't think in this case. But what about if the data is customer? I think uh, we don't have any trends. Okay. If you, have, if you don't have any trends, that might be possible. But most of the time, especially when we are working with sales data, uh, data related to temperature, and uh, yes, some kind of related data, uh, there is some kind of trend, especially when, t when we are working with temperature related data, the temperature goes uh, high in some of the year, in some uh, period of the year, and then it goes down in some, of, in some part of the year, right? And also this goes same for sales data, the sales will go high at the end of the year or when there is a holiday or so on. So most of the time, there will be some kind of trend when you are working on time series data. So if you decide to fill that with the mean or the median, your data will be distorted or you won't have a data that will be accurate for prediction or for forecasting. All right, I get this. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Anyone else? Anyone wants to add up? Uh, okay. Uh, if not, I'll continue. Uh, okay. 
I was on handling missing values. Mm. Yes, Hand, handling uh, handling missing values. So all type of data set in real world, including time, time series data, uh, will definitely have a problem with missing values. In the cause of missing values can be data corruption, IoT device failure, or failure to record data at any given time. So uh, when you're working with time series data, most of the time they are collected using IoT sensors and some kind of devices to collect data in real time. And sometimes the data, the device that's collecting the data might not be functioning properly and will definitely have uh, a missing value. So we are going to handle missing values by using uh, by using these methods, as Antonan also said, we can use the forward field, the backward field, the rolling window average, the filling up with previous seasonal data, and interpolation. Uh, and we we'll look into each of them in detail. And we can see that, or we can have the sum of the null values. And we can see that the PM2.5, the PM10, SO2, and NO2, carbon monoxide, and so on, contains lots of missing values. So we need to handle each of the uh, values separately. We need to handle each of the missing values. So before handling missing values, as I have said earlier, we need to look at the trend or at the pattern and we need to know or we need to make sure how our data is related or how our data is trending uh, throughout the year. Uh, and there are about 7,000 total missing values in our data. So when you, if you work on the temperature column, uh, we can select all of the null values uh, from the temperature column and uh, we can see that we have lots of missing values. This goes the same, the same goes for the other columns in our uh, data set. Uh, we can also have a look at missing values for the PM2.5 column or our target variable and we also have lots of missing values. So uh, just to have a look, we can visualize the missing values. Uh, for example, for the PM2.5, we can see that the missing value is, we have a missing value on 2013-0401. So if you go to that specific, uh, can we be? 17, yes, even here, uh, we can see that there is a missing value for the PM2 uh, uh, column or our target variable. So we can see how missing value affects our time series data analysis because it will create a discontinuity in our uh, linear graph and we can't correctly predict future uh, future data or future PM2.5 values for our data if you have this kind of discontinuity because our model will try to analyze the trend and uh, understand how each of the data is related to the timestamp that we have and uh, we'll try to draw some kind of conclusion. So we need to handle these kinds of missing values. The same goes for the temperature. Uh, we can see that uh, we have missing values um, maybe in the year 2015. Yes, uh, 2015, 0 to 25. So if we go to So if you go to 2015, 0 to, this should be around here. Yes. We can see that there are lots of missing values and uh, they are creating discontinuity in our linear graph. So missing value really affects our time series data analysis. So we need to handle them uh, using the above methods. Uh, so to handle the missing values, we'll, 
uh, we are first going to copy and we'll first try just to see we'll try to drop all of the uh, null columns but we have just made a copy so we'll be working on the null columns and this won't affect our original data set because we have made a copy of that and we'll see how our data uh, our data lies in when being plotted is the missing values when the missing values are dropped so you can see that it starts at zero and it goes down and it goes up and down and up so uh, we can see that there is some kind of trend in our data set and the lag is the timestamp which is uh, labeled by the hour so uh, there is about 20 there is 24 hours per day and uh, 24 times 365 365 is the number of days uh, per year it's about 8,000 and something. So on the 8,000, on the 8,000 hour, we see that our data goes up and on the 16th hour, it will again go up and so on. So it will start uh, from higher value of uh, the, the, the target variable and it will go down and it will go up and down and so on. So our, there is some kind of seasonality in our data set. Uh, the trend is going up and down and up and down on a specific interval of the year. So uh, we can then select only the years from 2014 to 2016 and we'll only select the temperature and we'll resample it by one lens. At first, this was sampled based on the hour of the day. So there are lots of data points here, but when you sample it by using the lens of uh, the year, we can have much better visualization. So uh we can see that when it's sampled by demands we can see that every 12 every on every 12 uh months of the year it goes up then down then on 24 it will go up and down in on 36 not exactly 36 but about 34 it will go up and so on so there is some kind of seasonality and we can see that uh when we sample it by months uh or even when we plot the graph when it's sampled by day, by the hour of the day. Uh, the next thing that we can do is we can uh, plot the lag plot of uh, uh, of our data. So what lag plot will normally do is a lag is any time series data. It's how much one point is falling behind uh, in time from another data point. So we are trying to uh, see how our data is, how the same point is related to uh, the previous, maybe our data, previous month's data or so on. So here, the default lag is one. We are trying to uh, see the temperature of the specific lag or the specific, let's say, hour to the uh, previous hour. So how is the data correlated? How is the current data related to uh, time minus one? So we can see that there is somehow linear relationship between the current time and the previous hour and the data resembles uh, or there is no much difference between the current time and an hour uh, the, the time that's an hour behind and we can also go back by three hours of the day and there isn't perfect relationship perfect linear relationship but this still works because we still have some kind of linear relationship between the current time and time minus three we can also go back to a uh, previous day at the same time. Uh, and here we can also see that we can see that it's linearly related, but not perfect, perfectly linear because from day to day, uh, there might be temperature change or so on. But uh, we can see that the data aren't much different. We can also go, yes, so 24 times 365 is 24 hours per day times 365 is a year behind or a year, a year back. So we can see how our data is related, how our current data or current temperature is related to the data that was year back. So we can also see say that it is linearly related, but not perfectly linearly related, but they are related or they are much more similar than other data. But if you take other data, let's say maybe we can just copy this and uh, maybe let me take half of it. 
you can see that this isn't related linearly. So when the time goes on or when it reaches the middle of the year, the data or the temperature isn't the same as the temperature, the temperature that is uh, right now. So the current temperature is only related or somehow similar uh, because our data is seasonal. The same temperature, we can have, we can expect same interval range of temperature uh, when we go a year back from now or an hour back from now or showers back from now. So what we can do when we uh, interpolate or when we uh, try to impute our missing values uh, is we can fill up the data by using uh, the, uh, the previous hour or showers back or even we can use the uh, previous year's uh, value for our temperature. But we can't use other values because they aren't related or they aren't the same. So how we can, so yes, based on the, the above flows, you can see that there is a linear relationship between hourly one to three daily and monthly data, so data points so that we can impute our missing data with either of them or take their average. Yes, the another thing that we can do is we can also take the average of uh, the previous hours and uh, fill the missing value by that, uh, uh, by that average value. Uh, so we'll be selecting the data from 2015, 0 to 21, to 0 to 21 into this specific hour. We are only selecting uh, specific hour data just to show you how we can impute our uh, data for the missing values. So we'll only be selecting the temperature column and uh, from this specific data or from this specific hours that are in the, on the filter data, or the subset of the data, we can see that we have about three missing values or three non values which are missing. So to fill up this specific uh, value, we can use the previous uh, hours data or the previous two or so on. We can also use go ahead in time and fill uh, from uh, the time that's going to come and fill up the uh, previous non values. So. Uh, I think we have already discussed about forward fill and backward fill. Uh, there is a simple method by using the fill in We can use the F fill. So what F fill will do is it will fill uh, the, so we have a non value on the third row of our data. So it will take the uh, above data and it will fill it on the forward uh, row. So this field is filled with one and this field is filled uh, with two and this specific field is filled uh, with one. So, and filling up with the next tower, we can use the backward field. It takes the same argument and uh, when we fill it with using backward method, uh, it will fill, it will go backwards and fill up the missing values by uh, the next uh, values of the row. I think you are already familiar with that. Uh, the next thing that I would like to talk about is the rolling window. We can also uh, select specific time frame or specific time window. Uh, I think this is uh, something that you really want to look at, especially in the data engineering field. You'll we'll mostly work on a rolling window or window based time frame when you want to pre process data on a specific interval, uh, especially when you are going to process data in bytes. You'll always, you'll mostly select data in bytes and you'll be selecting them by using uh, the window time frame. So uh, in Pandas, there is a rolling method that we can use. So we can specify the window that we want to select. Here we have only used two, then the minimum period is set to one. So what this will do is it will select two space, two rows. And uh, if there aren't two rows, it will at least be expecting one row. And finally, it will take the average of uh, the selected rows. So uh, if we set this to a higher value, maybe five or six, it will be looking for five values for five rows and it will take the average or the mean of the five values and, uh, sorry, and fill the missing value by using the average uh, of the value. So. Uh, you can see this is the mean. Uh, instead of this, let's look at the previous uh, data. So when you use time rolling, what it does is it will try to look for two, uh, for a window of 
uh, for a window time frame of two. So for the first one, it's just one. So it will just take the average of the first row. But for the second one, what it will do is it will select the first row and add up with the previous row. Since these are two, it will take the average of the two rows and uh, put a one uh, on this specific row and so on. So for this row, there is a num value. So it won't select this specific row. It will go up and will look for at least the minimum period is one. So it will look for at least one field and it will take uh, the average of one, so one over one, which is one. So none will be filled with one. And for the second row, the same thing will uh, go uh, for the second row. So this is two and the above row is none when it's going to be filled. So it will take the average and uh, the average will be two and so on. But uh, doing this will fill up all of the values or will change all of our uh, data values for all of our data sets. We only want to impute the missing values uh, in our data. We don't want to change or we don't want to alter uh, all of the uh, rows of our data set. So to do that, we, what we can do is uh, I have assigned a new uh, column. So we'll use the field enumerated, which can be used to fill up null values. And we'll use the rolling window for only the null values. And we'll set the uh, window to two and the minimum pairs is one. So it will look for two uh, for two windows or for two rows and we'll take the mean or the average of those rows and fill up the missing values. So this will come, uh, uh, this will be, this might be a better approach than the backward field or the forward field. And we can't decide before uh, exper experimenting that out, before trying that out and uh, have a look at how they are performing. So when the, the null values are being filled, we can see that uh, for we can see that only the null values are being filled or are being changed. Uh, when we use the temporal link uh, column, we change the entire data by filling up by using the rolling window. So we can see that the original data, which wasn't null, was also changed here. But uh, when we filled up only null values or null rows, uh, we can see that the original data isn't changed, but isn't changed, but only missing values are uh, being changed by our script. We can also, the next thing that we can do is we can fill up the previous here. As I've shown you earlier, uh, we can definitely say that the data that is, uh, that the temperature that's, uh, uh, the, the, the temperature that we have now is almost similar to the previous year's temperature of the same time. So we can also substitute the missing values with the previous years if the data is seasonal. So. What we can do is we can use the pandas offset to pandas is really good when working with timestamps. So we can uh, just locate the data and we can subtract one year from the current data and have a look at uh, the temperature column. So uh, we see that this is 2014, but the previous the previous one was for the year 2015. And when we subtract one year from the current data set or from the current index, uh, the means the day and the hour will be similar, but only the year of the column will be different so that we have selected the uh, the previous year and we can impute the, the data by using the previous year's temperature value. So to do that, what we can do is we can use apply lambda function and on the lambda function, we can locate the previous year or we can uh, index the previous year timestamp and if the specific row is null, we'll be using uh, the previous year's data. If it's not, we'll leave it. We'll just return uh, the current value. But if the value of that specific uh, column is null, we'll be filling it with the previous year's data. So after filling that with the temperature previous year, we can see that the null values are again filled by the previous year's data. So here we can see that this is three, which isn't uh, correct. Uh, it might be because the previous year's data somehow might go up and then go down, uh, but it seems that it doesn't go exactly the same way as the trend for the current year is going, the temperature is going. We can also see this for this specific field. This is 3.5, this might be correct. Uh, for this null value, we can see that it is 1.2. Uh, this might 
also not be right, we might need other methods. So we can have a comparison of different ways to fill up the data, and we can select uh, the method that works best for our data sets. So we just don't randomly pick uh, one method of filling up null values, but we'll experiment with uh, all of the available methods to fill up null values and uh, use the appropriate method to fill up uh, the null values. Okay, I think this is it uh, on filling or handling outliers. Any questions? Okay, Michael. Okay, hello, uh, Edidia. Hello. My, my question was, uh, uh, I remember that we have been, you and me have been arguing about uh, the, the what skewness uh, really provide us uh, before uh, analyzing the completeness of or uh, before uh, before doing any outlier and uh, outlier handling methods we were talking about uh, looking at the skewness of the data end now we have uh, seen that we have different methods of uh, filling up different uh, uh, missing values in our data frame so my question was, uh, shouldn't we compare these uh, methods of filling uh, outliers in our data set using the skewness uh, before and after filling our data? Since uh, the skewness kind of uh, tell us what our nature, what the nature of the data is, and after filling uh, using some uh, suggested method of handling out large, we can also uh, get another uh, skewness matrix and compare uh, how uh, our field data or how our, how our treated data deviated from the original skewness matrix that it uh, to have before uh, handling uh, outliers. Uh, okay, good. So uh, we've been using the skewness, we have been trying to measure the skewness of our data uh, before choosing the method to fill up uh, uh, to fill up our uh, to fill up missing values in our data, right? But we were using the skewness if you uh, when we were going to select the method of using uh, of using to fill up our missing values by using the mean or the median uh, value of our data. But here we are not using the mean or the median because of the specified reason that we mentioned earlier. We are only going to use uh, the MPT, the uh, the different the interpolation technique, the forward field, the backward field, and so on. For those methods, the skewness isn't required at all. But in a time series, if it wasn't a time series data, we'll definitely check the skewness to choose the mean or the median. But in time series data, we won't be using the mean or the median, so uh, checking for the skewness isn't relevant. Uh, uh, here we just want to check how our data is patterned or how our data uh, is uh, how our data is structured from year to year if it is seasonal how it uh, behaves in holidays and so on so this is different thing when compared to the previous data set that we have been working on so we'll be using the different approach, a different approach Okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, we have mentioned that uh, we can also use uh, lag values for, uh, for, let's say, for example, if we have a temperature data for the, uh, we, if we don't have a temperature data for uh, today, we can impute or we can uh, uh, treat this outlier using uh, what uh, our data have been doing one year earlier or uh, something like that from uh, by picking data from uh, going back in time yeah. so uh, if this is so uh, later we will be serving this uh, data frame to our model so mm -hmm. wouldn't this affect or wouldn't this uh, bias our model and uh, make it to overfit uh, since the data points may be uh, the same to, to, to yeah same. okay so if i get your question let's say uh in a specific month of the year the temperature goes really up right yeah 
So with which month of the year would maybe let, let's just say that uh, the year the month January uh, the temperature gets its peak uh, on the month of January. So you have a missing value in your data on the month of January. So with which months do you want to fill it up or which months will be quite similar with the current months of the year that you are going to work on? If yeah, you know that the temperature is going to reach its peak on the year on the month of January, you will be sure that the same pattern will go uh, for the coming years as well, right? Yeah, probably that, 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 that's, uh, that makes sense. But isn't somehow, isn't, uh, aren't we uh, getting our hands uh, Hello, Michael. Uh, is it from my side or? Okay. Mm, can you guys hear me? Lift out. Oh, okay. Yes, okay, then. I can hear you. Okay, uh, then we can go to Josias. Yes, uh, I, I don't have a request. I don't have a question, but I'd like to know if we we share this book notebook with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is this note on the Google Drive uh, for week three? Okay, if I haven't shared, I, I will share that. Uh, on, on this week's drive, I, I will share that. Yes, I think it would be very useful to ask. Okay, uh, sure, sure, uh, I will share that. Uh, Mohammed? Uh, so, uh, I apologize uh, because I came late uh, for the session, uh, but I didn't uh, attend that. Um, uh, let me reform my question. Uh, what are um, the methods that we will use to fill our missing data in, in this specific uh, project? Uh, and by that, I mean uh, the columns that I have presented earlier this morning. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, the first thing that you can, for any time series based data, you can use one of the meters listed here, but uh, you just don't want to fill, for example, you don't you just don't want to fill the current data uh, with the previous year, as I've shown you here. You, you have, you, you'll have to first look at the trend and how the data is, or how the sales is going from year to year and how each of the features in your data set is going uh, from month to month uh, throughout the year. So after you understand how your data is related and how your data trends throughout the year, you can fill up those missing values with the by using the appropriate method. Maybe you can use the forward field if uh, maybe you can uh, plot the lag plot of the data. Mm. You can uh, plot the lag plot of that specific uh, column and see how the data is going or moving from time to time or from hour to hour. And if they have linear leadership, you can fill up it by using forward field or backward field. Uh, if not, you might want to average or uh, you might want to check for previous year or for specific months of the year or so on. It might, the data might be seasoned quarterly uh, or so on. So you first have to check how that, how your data is, how you, how, you first have to check the pattern of your data set. After you know how your data is patterned, you can fill up the missing values by uh, by the values that have similar pattern or by the values that have similar, uh, by, by the values that have linear relationship to your data. Okay, so uh, I will rephrase uh, what you said to, uh, to show that I understood 
uh, your uh, answer. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, we'll uh, plot or uh, we'll see how our data is dis distributed throughout mm. the years. And with that pattern of that year, we could fill the, the non values uh, of uh, that column or of that specific year. Yeah, sorry, can you come again? Uh, I just lost you in the middle. Um, I said that uh, first of all, I have to uh, I have to uh, show my uh, data pattern and uh, distribution. And uh, for that specific year, I choose um, to fill the data, the missing data, with the with a similar pattern that are uh, for that year. Yes, yes, that's correct. By similar pattern, we, we are seeing that 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 they have linear relationship with the current trend, and uh, yes, they are similar. So, uh, is there any resources so that I can deep deepen my understanding, and uh, to have some of uh, hands-on examples? Mm, okay, I, I will share this notebook, but. Uh, there are much more helpful resources than this notebook. I will try to look for other resources, especially on Medium. Uh, there are plenty of uh, resources for handling out uh, missing values in time search data. I'll try to look for those and send it on Slack. Uh, just remind me if I forget, please remind me uh, later or tomorrow. Okay. Uh, in which account? Uh, Edidia or? Iridia, you can yes, you can tag me on the group for uh, you can DM. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, uh, great. I, I think time is going. Uh, I would have loved to show you more in detail about the profit. Uh, once your data is ready for analysis or for modeling, I think uh, it's easy to use any kind of model that is relevant for uh, the task or the challenge. Uh, I think first thing before going to the modeling part. Is this week's data uh, classification or a regression problem? It might be easy, but uh, I think it's best if we have if all of us are on the same page. Maybe can you type it on the chat? Yes. Regression. Yes. Uh, yes. Why is it not a classification problem? Someone quickly. Uh, can someone unmute and? Yes, uh, because we are predicting time, we are predicting values over time, so it uh, it it is regression. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we are just trying to find, or we are trying to uh, forecast a sale uh, for specific time periods that is in the future. So we are not performing a classification problem, but rather we are trying to perform, or we are trying to model a regression problem. So uh, I think there are multiple models that you can use for regression. One that's outlined in the channel document is the random forest. You can also try out others, but uh, I will show you the Facebook profit, which is specifically designed and developed by Facebook for time stress data. And I highly encourage you and recommend you all to have a look at Facebook profit because it's specifically developed for time series data analysis. Uh, and you might try to work on uh, random forest or similar regression models, but this is this model is really good and uh, built specifically for uh, time stress data analysis. So we'll try to look at uh, how we can uh, work on time stress data analysis. With uh, okay, I'll try to finish up quickly. Uh, but if you have problem installing uh, Facebook Profit, try to install Python. I was having a problem because this is a version dependency problem. You need to first install Python. Try to install the specific version, this specified version uh, for Python in Facebook Profit uh, uh, because there is some kind of uh, version smudge. Uh, you can also try to install the Facebook Profit directly, but you will definitely encounter some kind of errors. Maybe it's only from, uh, from my side. Uh, if it's not working, try to install both package and it will work. And we are importing the data, we are importing uh, our data set. I will not go over it and 
trying to visualize how our data is related. So this is uh, a demand function or energy demand data set, which will, okay, let me just show you. Uh, yes, so it only has uh, three other features. The timestamp will use it as the index, it's a time search data. And uh, we can see the demand and the temperature and the precip. And uh, before starting to model, we can see that how our data is correlated to each other. Uh, we can see that the demand for energy goes up when the temperature goes up and it goes down. And it goes down when the temperature goes down and it is directly related with the temperature because uh, the higher the temperature, the more demand for electricity. Maybe people need it for cooler systems uh, or some kind of uh, lift systems to cool uh, the place. So uh, we resample our data. These the data points are a uh, lot. So we resample the data based on the day. This is also distributed based on uh, hourly basis. So we will resample that uh, to be uh, uh, we will resample it to be so that it will be distributed on a daily basis, and we can see at the plot, we can see that we have much less uh, points than before. And uh, then when we are going to use the Facebook profit, we are going to import the profit package. And uh, for the first one, we are only going to use the timestamp and the demand. Our target variable is the demand. So we'll only be using timestamp and trying to predict the demand for future sales. And Facebook profit expects our timestamp uh, to be the column name to be days and our target variable to be y. This is uh, specific for uh, Facebook profit. So we need to always rename our timestamp column to days and our demand column to y. And when we plot it, we can see that the days is the timestamp and the y is our target variable. And finally, uh, yes, one thing I would like to mention, you would normally split your data by using, uh, when you were using train test split from a scalar, it will just take sample of the data to the train set and sample of the data to the uh, test set uh, on a random basis. But here it's a time series data, so we don't, we just don't want to split the data uh, on a random basis because we want to keep the continuity and have a look or make sure our model understands the pattern of the data. So we are selecting the date from starting from 2012 above and uh, less than 2017 for our training set and for the test set we are only selecting the data that are uh, above doing, above the year 2017. So we can see at the shape we have about 2000 data for the training and 104 for the test set. And uh, it is straightforward we can feed to the profit model the interval which this is the significance interval or the confidence level that the model is going to build uh, and the yearly seasonality is true because our data isn't is seasoned uh, annually. We want to make sure to explicitly explicitly specify that uh, it is a seasonal data. If not, if we don't specify this, the profit package by itself will try to analyze the trend and uh, it will try to understand the data and uh, make sure if it's seasonal or not. But if we already know if our data is seasonal, we can specify this specific. Uh, uh, parameter and we can finally fit our training data. So after we fit, we are only using the uh, the timestamp and the target variable. We are not using any other features. So we can uh, look at the parameters and we can make a future prediction. So on the model that has been initialized, we can use the make future data frame, which is also available from the profit package. And we want to make prediction or we want to make future data frame for about 104. Uh, data points because we have seen that our test, yes, our test contains about 104 points. So we want to generate or make future data frame for about 104 data and you can see the tail. So it has generated data points for about, uh, for the specified pairs and we can forecast or predict the data based on the generated dates. So we have already trained our data and finally, based on the trained data, we want to predict or forecast uh, uh, future demands of this specific data set. And what this will generate is it will 
uh, return the forecast. And in the forecast, you can get the time frame, the timestamp, the y hat, the y hat lower and the y hat upper. This y hat lower and y hat upper is for the significance level or the confidence interval. And we can uh, look at this. We can also calculate uh, for regression, we normally use the root mean squared error, the mean squared error, and so on. So we can uh, use either of those to calculate our uh, accuracy of the model. And finally, we can have a look at how our data performed by using the original was the Y column that we specified, and the new predicted or forecasted data was uh, is the Y hat. And when you plot this, we can see that it has got the pattern for the demand of our data. So it isn't perfect because we haven't used uh, enough features for our data because there are also other features. Temperature is really uh, correlated to the uh, demand of electricity, but only by using uh, the timestamp in the demand, we can see that it is uh, it, has, it has already found the pattern of the data and it's doing good, but not enough. So the second thing, so we can also see that the confidence in the interval lies in the uh, areas of light blue. And this is the actual data, which is the outliers, not exactly outliers for time series data because there are points of demand for electricity at specific intervals of time throughout the year. So we can see that it is missing these specific points. So uh, we need to include uh, other features in our training as well, uh, in addition to the timestamp. So let me just show you uh, how we can use the additional features. As I have said, the timestamp should be renamed to DS and the target variable should be renamed to Y for Facebook profit. And we can add uh, other, uh, other features and I will show you how we can fit this to our model. And we can see that we have selected the temperature and uh, yes, one thing I forgot to, to mention, if there are missing values in our target variable or in the y-axis or uh, the variable or the feature that we are interested in predicting or forecasting, Facebook uh, profit will handle it by itself. We don't need to explicitly handle missing values for the target variables. But if there is a null value or missing value in other features that you are, we want to include, uh, we need to uh, handle the missing values because the Facebook profit package won't be able to handle the missing values for other features. But for the target variable, uh, it won't complain and it will handle the missing values. It will also uh, try to predict or analyze the trends of the data and uh, make sure if it's a season data or not. But uh, for other features, we need to handle missing values uh, explicitly. And uh, we can see that there is one missing values in the temperature column and we'll just uh, fill it by using the forward field. And uh, we can see that the temperature also uh, varies throughout the months and we want to give additional feature or we really want to work on feature entering and add additional columns uh, so that our data will or our model will learn more from those features because temperature is different throughout the year we want to add the, te the men's column and for each men's column, the temperature will be different and the model will understand better how our data are correlated and will give the parameters, the more accurate parameters when uh, modeling the data. So we can also have a look at, at the uh, plot leap, uh, at the plot leap distribution graph and uh, we can see how our data is distributed. Uh, finally, what we are going to do is we are going to group by the mens and aggregate the temperature column, the max, the mean, and the median. Here we can see that the maximum, yes, the maximum values of the temperature are recorded uh, from the mens five to, yes, to the to the mens eight. So uh, from the fifth mens to the eighth or to the ninth mens to the ninth mens, there is a higher temperature and. Uh, in the months before or from one to four, uh, it isn't high enough and from 10 to 12, it goes down. So our temperature will be increasing at specific uh, months of the year. So we are adding that specific interval so that our model will be able to understand uh, much better and we'll try to assign much accurate or uh, proper uh, weight for each of the parameters. So what we'll do here is if the temperature is greater than uh, 80, 
which is the same, which is the summer temperature, we return one, else we return zero. So this is also part of the feature engineering. We are adding additional column, and if the temperature is above 80, we are assigning uh, one, and if it's less than 80, we are assigning zero. So we are also uh, cutting or uh, uh, we are also grouping the menses, and we have given three. So starting from mens one to four, it will be grouped to a specific uh, interval, and from mens five to nine, it will be grouped to the specific to a specific interval, and so on. So we are by grouping the mens by uh, by, by specifying the the value of the summer temperature, we are helping the model to understand. Uh, much better how the datas are related and which are important features for uh, the sales or the demand of electricity that's going to be forecasted. So after working on the feature engineering, we are splitting our data. As I said earlier, when splitting the data for train tests, we will not use train test split from a scalar because it's a time series data. We'll be selecting a specific range of data uh, for the train data and specific range for uh, the test set. Finally, we can specify the interval level, the year seasonality, if, since it's uh, seasonal data, we specify this to true. And what we can do is, as, as I've shown you earlier, we will only use, we, we only use the timestamp and the target variable for the previous prediction. And we use the y, uh, the y value or the y column and name for our target variable and the days uh, column and name for our timestamp. When we are, when you want to add additional features, we'll use add regressor and the regressor, the name of the column and the standardized to false. And we here, we, we just added two additional features for our uh, machine learning model. So we'll finally fit it. And we'll also go over the same steps to make future predictions. And uh, after making a prediction, we can, yes, we can have a look or uh, we can plot the data and see how our data uh, is uh, how our new model is performing. So when we added temperature, we can see that the outliers are also uh, uh, recognized by the model and there is much better uh, accuracy than when we used the temperature, the timestamp uh, only for the feature, only for, as a feature. When we, added, when we add the temperature feature in our model, we can see that it's performing much better than the previous model. And when we have other features as well in our data set, we can add all of the features that are relevant for the machine learning model, and we can get much better results. Uh, one thing I would like to also inform you is you can, uh, the Facebook uh, profit model uh, is also able to handle or to uh, analyze patterns for holidays and non-stationary data points. Uh, try to have a look at that, and if anyone of you have a problem or uh, are working on this specific part of the challenge, please you can contact me on Slack and we can have a look together. Okay, uh, any question, Mohammed? No, no, uh, I have no question. It was okay. by mistake. Okay, okay, get you. Okay, uh, I had a question on the test train splits so if we're not using profit in instead if we're using an sklearn model uh, how will we do the test train split uh, while yes, preserving the if you, are even, if you are even going to use the random forest or other models regression models you won't be splitting the data by using uh, a scalar test train test split you'll be splitting manually by using a specific method to split out the data based on the timestamp that you have, and you will be feeding that to your uh, Moody. This goes, uh, the same goes for deep learning models as well as normal machine learning models. Okay, so we'll just manually have to select a time frame for the start yes. and the end. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 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 yes, uh, my question is, uh, we use uh, the, here you use the, the temperature column as is without uh, in standardizing it or uh, normalizing it, right? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry, it's because uh, this uh, uh, model is a regression model. 
and you usually uh, standardize um, you normalize usually the the variables so they are all mm. like go from minus one to one or from zero to one but here mm. the temperature is used as is right yes yes we did that because uh if if uh, if our data especially when we are working on some specific machine learning models we will need to standardize or normalize our data but here we want the data to exactly know which points, uh, the, the number of points that are in in the data set for the training in the test set, as well as for the prediction or the target variable. We don't want our model to lose the structure of the data that you are feeding it. So if you are standardizing sometimes, sometimes it might be appropriate, but most of the times we want the model to understand and uh, look at the pattern that the data or the features uh, are having before feeding them to the model. But I would okay. say it depends from 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 the data set that you are working on. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't. I'm not sure I understand completely why this case is different. Uh, because are you saying that if we try to normalize the temperature, we will lose the trend, we will lose the yes. pattern? Yes, here, okay, I think, let me explain it a bit more. Uh, we are not giving the temperature directly to the model. Ah. Uh, where was the... Yes, uh, here, we are saying if it's above 80, we are returning yeah. 1, and the unique values are zeros and 1s for the temperature okay. column. But so for the target variable, which is the Y or the demand in electricity, we want it to be predicted in its actual form. Yeah, no, but uh, the columns that are inputted in the model, the temperature column is not, uh, is not one of them? It is, but the values or the unique, the unique values are zeros and ones, and it won't affect the model because there isn't any kind of, not exactly outlier, but any kind of points that would lead the model uh, in the wrong way because it's only filled with zeros and ones and the means is also filled uh, between the range zero to two or zero to three okay okay thank you okay uh, Fasal, last question okay thanks Ibiza. i just have uh, two questions how long uh, you're going to share this two notebooks right that's yes. my question Yes, yes, I will share both of them uh, right after we finish this session. Okay, uh, just to quickly wake up, how uh, is the uh, build with add regressor? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, you're a bit, uh, you're breaking, sir. So. Uh, okay, where am I now? Uh, a bit better, but still not good enough. Oh, okay, maybe. Uh... It's my connection, but it's just a quick question. Okay, uh, okay. I think I can hear now. Okay, go on. Is the add regressor the only way to uh, add uh, features to our model? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. So maybe you can type it on the chat? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I just typed it now. Uh, yes, to the to the Facebook profit model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Facebook profit model normally expects the two columns, the timestamp and the target variable, labeled or uh, renamed in the appropriate format. When we want to add additional features, that's the only way that I know. Or yes, that's the only way, or the only way that I know <laughs> to add to uh, to the existing model. Uh, but it will, you will defer the parameters that you are passing when your data is stationary or non-stationary and so on. Because uh, Facebook Profit will be able to handle stationary and non-stationary data. I think in the yesterday session, you have seen uh, how you can handle or how you can change data from non-stationary to stationary and so on. But in Facebook Profit, it will be able to handle non-stationary data. So 
you need to provide additional parameters. Uh, uh, but okay, I think time is already up for that. Uh, uh, but what you do is instead of the additive, okay, instead of the additive parameter, you'll provide the uh, multiplicative parameter because they are non stationary and you want to pass a different uh, format or you want to know, you want to tell to the model that you are working on a non stationary data. So based on the type of data that you're working, it will differ, the, the parameters will differ, but to add the models, it's it's somehow additive. After all, it's additive kind of model, the profit model. So you will just add the layers or the different features uh, in the profit model, to the, to the profit model. Okay, uh, great. Uh, 